Sustaining in Christ. I am, I am a woman of God, but I did not used to be. I used to be a woman of the world. Y'all may, y'all may have used to like women of the world. Um, I have six brothers and two sisters, so it feels like being like home. It feels like just being home with y'all. And good job sitting still during count. I'm so proud of y'all. Good job. Okay. <laughs> If y'all look in the magazine, my story is in the magazine that was handed out. I think it's page on, uh, on page 17 or 18. <laughs> y'all, you know that picture. <laughs> oh, no, no, not that picture. The next, turn it. The broke down picture. <laughs> my mug shot picture. I was missing like half my face in that picture. You can't even see it. I know, right? Oh man, I was a mess. I was a mess. And if God can take that broke down, broke down girl, because I was a girl in a woman's body, broke down girl, and change her into this. That's all God. because I think we can connect on that, okay? Whether you're a man or a woman, your identity is important. Knowing who you are, like Christy said, is important because knowing who you are, believing who you are, everything flows from that, right? Uh -huh. Your mind, your emotions, your desires, your choices. Knowing your identity gives you direction and position and purpose. We used to have one purpose and that was running on the streets, doing whatever we want to do, manipulating everybody, controlling everything around us, beating people up when we didn't get our way. <laughs> right? Oh, you laughing because you know. You, y'all know. I used to be the hardest girl. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you saw no emotion from me. No vulnerability, no transparency. I kept everything inside, and as I was abused and manipulated and controlled and spoken lies and labels over me from a small, small girl, I started to believe those. You start to walk in the manner of those, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was eight years old and I tried to commit suicide. Eight years old. How do you know how to do that at eight? Like who told you to jump up on the monkey bars and think it was a great idea to hit the ground, break your neck, and end your life? At eight. That's how bad I just wanted to, I just wanted out at eight. My father was absent. He was a workaholic. And it affected me. Y'all know that uh, fatherlessness is about 75%, 75% of people in recovery, in juvie, in prison experience fatherlessness. But after eight years old and not completing something that I tried to do, which was end my life, it's just, oh, Sharon is crazy. Sharon's crazy, she's, she's trying, to get, trying to get attention. And that followed me. And so I began to try to prove myself in other ways, accomplish things, get scholarships to college, win Miss Congeniality at a beauty pageant that I had no business being in. <laughs> Everything, trying to get men's approval, right? That was easy, that was easy for me to get man's approval. But that became my identity. And it took me down a path of broken relationships, unhealthy relationships with men, being rejected by men. I 
don't understand. What's wrong with me? And that drove me to more mental illness, a bipolar, uh, a bipolar diagnosis, psych meds, in and out of psych hospitals, still trying to commit suicide, still trying to prove my worth somewhere. And then my husband wanted a divorce. Well, I fell into addiction before then. Um, with the trauma accident, I was on pain pills. But I fell into addiction. My, my husband at the time could not handle it. Wanted a divorce. Oh, here comes another rejection. Loser! That's my label. Loser, unloved, ain't nobody want you. Can y'all, can, can you relate? And so we get hard. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> we can't do nothing, right? You're gonna, you, look what you're gonna miss. <laughs> He's like, oh no, you're a hot mess. I'm like, bye bye. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> But I was. I, I was rejecting me. I didn't wanna be me. But everywhere I went, there I was. I'm like, girl, will you stop following me? <laughs> oh. Couldn't get away from me. Um, <laughs> but I, I got my kids taken away. I ended up in a psych ward again because I tried to commit suicide. So I'm like, okay, I'm not a mama. I'm not a wife. Who am I? What am I doing here? I have no purpose. I'm taking up space. I'm a loser. Ain't nobody want me. I came out of the psych ward homeless. My parents didn't want to deal with me. And I fell into a life of the streets at 34 that I'd never known before. I show up and, you know, I, I was born in religion. I never did anything wrong. And I show up like, hey, and everyone's like, you're an undercover brother. Uh-uh, you're an undercover cop. Why are you asking so many questions? Why do you look like that? And you just don't fit in. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is for real. This is for real. And I'm like, you can't tell me where to be. I'm going to be long here. Watch this. <laughs> and so I went hard. I went hard and I got into meth and I got into heroin. And I'm like, dang, okay, I don't look the part. This is easy. I can make a business out of this. And I started dealing, and I started doing very well. But you can't be in that life and in that darkness too long until the light comes. And you get exposed, and you get busted. And praise the Lord for that. Yeah. But all this while, my identity was getting deeper and farther from the image of God. I was perverting it. I was destroying it. I think it was the eighth or ninth time I was in um, jail on my way to prison on three probations and fixing to sign my prison plea and I met somebody what'd you say? you said yes, Jesus <laughs> Jesus He's like, hey girl, I want to hang out with you. And I'm like, trust me, you don't want me. And he called me in and he held me and he said, I loved you. I want you. You're my child. And I believed him. For the first time in my life, I believed somebody. And like that, I was changed. I had clarity. I had power. Girl I, girl, I was weak. I was weak. I was passive. I couldn't talk to nobody. I was scared of everything. And now it's just like, bam, here I am. Woo! Superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
oh my gosh. But it wasn't like, hey, I'm gonna kill you and beat you up. It was like, I love you. And her was like, what? <laughs> Why are you so happy, girl? <laughs> but I was in jail. Please tell me if I'm going over time. She's like, stop. <laughs> but I was in jail on my way to prison and I was content. I wanted to be there. I could have bonded out. I said, please leave me in. I do not need to go out there. I need to be retaught and recreated even further. I'm in jail, locked up, lost everything. My kids, I'm a meth and heroin addict. I can't even accomplish committing suicide. Nobody wants me, but he does. Amen. And so he taught me and he started talking to me. And I was just like, hey, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm kneeling beside a dirty toilet. It's dirty up in here. <laughs> I think women might be worse. <laughs> but I'm kneeling beside a toilet and saying, Lord, you want to send me to prison? I'll go to prison. I'm yours. You want to send me? You, do whatever you want with me. Because wherever I go, you're coming with me. Amen. I remember the first time I, he, he, he sent me to Phoenix Rescue Mission for a year and a half. I was personally discipled by him in his word, in his Bible, following blindly. Okay, you want to go over there? Let's go over here. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go over here? Okay, let's do what's happening over here. But every, every thought that I had, I'm like, okay, all my thinking got me nowhere but here, right? So... I want to have one choice, trusting him, and every initial impulsive thought that came into my mind, I'm going to do the complete opposite. I'm going to follow the spirit. He's like, go say hey to that girl. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I started having a desire for relationships, for women. Y'all, y'all want, y'all, we used to fight people. We used to fight our brothers and fight our sisters out there, right? Now you want to bring them in and love on them and care for them and speak truth to them. Only God can do that. Amen. But he turned my miserable life into a ministry and said, you're not going back to what you used to do. You're not going back to exercise and sports and fitness. You've got a new life of going into ministry. I'm like, I don't even know what that means, but okay. <coughs> he turned my pain into purpose. And he gave me a new identity. A new, with new identity comes new thoughts, new heart. New choices. I remember the first time I, I, I got out of the mission and back into the real life, and I felt ready, man. I felt ready. Like a spiritual UFC fighter. Like, come on, bring it, anybody. Anybody. <laughs> Satan, I see you. <laughs> I did. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but he... I remember the first time my faith got like really tested and I got tempted outside of the mission, outside of, you know, my refuge where I, where I got to heal. He kept me in a safe place, like prison, for real. Kept me in a safe place of refuge. And you can grow when you're safe. When you hear his voice, you don't got all these distractions of the world. So I got really good at listening. I got really good at knowing which voice was his. I used to have 82 voices in my head, and now there's three, woo! <laughs> and I know which one is his, and I know which one is mine, and I know which one is Satan's. <laughs> For the first time, <laughs> my faith got really tested and tempted, and I, man, I made the right choice, and I'm like, yes, that scripture tests your faith and prove that it's genuine, not real! <laughs> How many times did we keep going? We're like, okay, yes, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. And then something happens. A girl comes by. Somebody comes by. And we fight. Fail. Right? And we're not. We, we didn't fall in spirit. Step into our new identity. Like, really live that out. In Galatians 5, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Amen. Oh, yeah. It is for freedom. Do you know what comes with freedom? 
<laughs> Excellent, brother. It's not. Freedom is not having a, a DOC number, I'll tell you that. Freedom is not wearing blue. You could be locked up in here and be woo! Jesus! And be free. That's your identity. Not to have your freedom and go use it and abuse it, but to be truly free, men of God. You can be men of God, like Christy is saying, men of valor. Do you even know what that means? You do. That's what our children need. That's what us women want. I want a godly man. Amen. <laughs> I never thought that would happen for real. But like attracts like, right? You want a godly woman? You better be a godly man. Amen. Oh man, he knows. He knows. I'm going to tell him you said hey. <laughs> God can and will restore everything broken and shattered in your life. Amen. All you need is faith. Amen. All you need is belief. He'll take you into the unknown like Princess Elsa on Frozen into the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that song has a new, a new meaning for me. Like, yeah! <laughs> Y'all don't give me coffee at 5 p.m., please. <laughs> We love you. Jesus loves you. He wants to take you to incredible places. If you don't believe him or don't trust him, ask a brother for help. Okay? We love y'all. Amen.